I'm most dear kind of very saying, Father, Lord, we do thank you, Lord, another day we bless this with. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, just be good in your house this morning. I pray you touch every need, every heart, for just do a work now, Lord, that only you can do. Lord, touch the choir as we stand and sing. Help us, dear Lord, as only you can. We thank you, we praise you, Lord, for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. Touch Brother Adam as he comes to preach. Hide him behind the cross. You may what we need to hear, Lord, sing conviction upon those that are here lost. Lord, say for it's everybody's turning too late. We'll thank you, we'll praise you, you're going to work for it all. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. How many of you remember? Hearing a song when you were younger, I have decided to follow Jesus. I looked for it in the book, and I couldn't find it. It's been a while. Does, does everybody remember those words? Yeah. We're, we're going to try that first. Have you checked in that language? I did. Yeah. <laughs> I have decided to follow Jesus. Church. 
And I, I spent all that time thinking I was okay. But the Holy Ghost came to me one night. I said, you need to get saved. Well, from that point on, I decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. You see, folks, I think we're headed for days. We, we think we've got it tough now. And these little ones that are back here in the back, they're going to see stuff we've never thought about seeing. Amen. But you need to get it set in your mind, your heart and your mind right now that I've decided to follow Jesus. Amen. No turning back. Amen. 313.
Amen. Well, good to be in God's house, ain't it? Amen. Amen. Ain't God good? All the time. All the time? No, we're good. Thank you. All the time, God is good. You look, and there's never been a time that he's not been good. Amen. You say, you don't know what I've been dealing with. He's still good. You're still living, by the way. Hey, you're still breathing, by the way. So uh, there's never a time he ain't good. He wakes us up in the morning and, and uh, you know, lets us work, let us breathe, and let us move. I, I think of the scripture over there in the book of Acts where uh, Paul is walking around Mars Hill and he sees all these altars. And they, they would worship anything. They would build an altar to any god, any kind of god. They would build an altar. And he's a walking around and he sees an altar and it says this, to the unknown God. You know what they're doing? They know there's a, something out there. And evidently there's something more than what they got there. He said to the unknown God. And Paul said, I notice you got sort of my words. And I've seen the inscription to the unknown God. He said, this, in other words, just let me tell you about him. It's in him that we breathe and have our being. Hey, it's him that allows us to move. That's what Paul's telling them. Hey, listen, I'm going to just tell you that God's still on the throne and he's still in control. And uh, I'm thankful for that. He is good. Amen. Hey, we don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. You say, preacher, I, I, I deserve to do better. I Look at all I've done. Well, I remind you that Job was a perfect man and upright. I mean, it didn't mean he was mature is what it's talking about. He endured evil. He, he stayed away from evil. And he still went through more than any of us will ever go through. And he kept on. Amen. Good to be here this morning. We got, we got a lot of uh, folk at sick. Just remember them. And uh, pray that God be with them. Remember the service tonight. Offering for Bibles today. We're getting back in the swing of it. The Bibles for, uh, we seen the brother Luther. And uh, we, we see in... 200 is what we see in, in, you know, unless this is over to 200, but uh, we always add to it to make it 200. But uh, the women's Bible study on Tuesday night, March the 22nd at 7 p.m. And then the youth Easter celebration and Bible study Saturday, March the 27th at 2 p.m. Change offering for the youth next Sunday. Foothills Fellowship meeting, March the 5th of, of 15th, 4 p.m. choir practice and, and uh, 5 p.m. service. So remember that. If anybody wants to go, we'll do our best to get you there. And uh, But we appreciate the Lord. You can't have. Somebody asked my pastor one time. He said, uh, what do you do for all the young people? And uh, at Indian Creek Baptist Church, he said, well, said, Sunday morning I preach to them. Sunday night I preach to them. We come back on Wednesday and I preach to them again. Can I tell you something? It still worked. Why do men want to try to find something new? Let's find another way to reach somebody or reach the young people. Hey, my Bible tells me he chose by the foolishness of preaching to save them which are lost. Hey, it still works. Hey, the Word of God still works. And uh, I, I, I'm just old-fashioned, I guess. But I, I do, and I ain't ashamed of it, by the way. I am what I am, and, and uh, I thank God for it. And uh, I'm glad I was raised that way. Brother Jerry, back yonder, Dad could have made a, another decision, went somewhere else where they didn't believe the Word of God. But uh, I'm glad he chose the path that he took. And Brother Steve, that path, I'm still on it. And plan on staying on it. Not looking back. I'm thankful for what he done for me. Listen towards this song, Just As I Am. This is one we got in the little blue book we had uh, made years ago. I guess the girls were just small, and we'd try to sing some. But I love this song. I'm glad he took me to say as I am. Just a stranger wandering through this land. My sins were many. Like grains of sand Searching for something 
to please this inner man. But when I nailed at that old altar, he took me just as I am. Just as I am. So filthy was I. Just as I am. And I knew not the reason why. He said, friend, you're forgiven through the blood. I will cleanse. And the reason he died was just as I am. A worthless is all I meant to the world. But I meant something to the Lord. For when he chose the road to Calvary, I was on his mind. He suffered and died just for you and I. Just, just as I am, filthy was I. And just as I am, and I knew not the reason why. He said, friend, you're forgiven through the blood. I will cleanse. And he's with the reason he died. He's just as I am. Just as I am without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I And he died He's just as I am Can't beat songs about Christ and the blood And all that If you have your Bibles, turn with us To the book of Psalms Psalms 112 And we'll actually be looking at two or three different Psalms this morning. Let's give you what's on my heart. I'm, I'm thankful for the way God's been helping us, and God has been good. Did we forget the offering? Stand up. I'm ready to preach, brother. Huh? Going to place it twice. Second time is for the the Bibles. Amen. Go ahead and run it around there. Somebody got a testimony. Hey, I'm ready to preach. Praise God. I don't understand. These guys don't want to preach. Is my mic on now, Brother David? If you're visiting, we appreciate you being with us today. If you're listening in the parking lot, we appreciate you. Appreciate those on Facebook. And I'm thankful that uh, things have sort of got back to semi-normal, ain't it? And uh, I don't know if it ever get back to normal, but I'm thankful that God has helped us this far. And, uh, and it, it has been God. Amen. And uh, if we went through 2020... And didn't have as many. We've had some, but not like some churches. The virus and stuff, like some, we ought to be thankful. Yeah. I mean, we've had some that had it. And I mean, we was in the parking lot. And uh, but you know, God, God's been good, and He's blessed us, and He's He's uh, more than good. Bless the offering during all this time. 
He's blessed the youth fund all this time. Bibles, we've not missed a, a month with the Bibles. And uh, hey, God just being good, God ain't he? He just being good. Can we give him a wave offering one more time? Amen. We'll just give, we'll give him another time. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Psalms 112. You can remain standing, if you would, for reverence to the Word of God. Amen. Not me, the Word of God. We ain't done this much, but we need to get back at it. Amen. Natural anthem's important. We do with it. And uh, I think the Word of God is, don't you? The infallible Word of God. Psalms 112, verse 5. A good man showeth favor and leadeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall, be, uh, shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Trust in, in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he, shall, until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horns shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and, and be grieved. He shall gash with his teeth and melt away. The desires of the wicked shall perish. Brother Josh Warmer, you pray with us. Amen. You can be seated. I, I want you to notice, I'm going to read two other passages of Scripture, then we'll get to what we're going to preach. The Bible said, my heart is fixed in Psalms 57. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. We find again in Psalms 108, and it's probably in here more, but this is the three that's on our heart. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. And then in the Psalms that we read just now and before, before you, in Psalms 112, he said in verse 7, he said, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. I want to preach this morning on this thought on a fixed heart. On a fixed heart. You look the word... Fix up. You look it up, and it means firm. It means secure. Hey, it means unmovable. That's what it means. And, and David is saying, in spite of the enemy, in spite of what he's dealing with and going through, he's saying, my heart is fixed. In other words, that, hey, I ain't going to move from it. Hey, I got looking at this, and um, it's been on my heart all week, it's these passages of Scripture, and I just want to give you a few things on, on the meaning of fixed heart. It means fast and security, uh, securely in position. Uh, the King I always go back to the King James Version uh, a definition, and, and that means to make stable, to set and establish immovably. And uh, then he said, when your heart is fixed, let me give you this. Two things here out of the scripture. We got three things we're going to deal with. And then we'll go to the house. But before I get to them, I, in the scripture that we read, I, hey, uh, when your heart is fixed, you can praise God when the enemy's around. Amen. You get what I'm saying? Hey, when your heart is fixed, hey, you, you, when the enemy's around, it don't matter who's around really. It don't matter what you're going through. It don't matter if the devil's giving you a fit through the week. Hey, every one of these psalms that I read, he said, my heart is fixed, and I will sing who? To the Lord. I will praise him. Hey, because his heart is fixed. Now, he ain't talking about the heart that goes beat, 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 beat. He's talking about the heart of man. 
Hey, we all got a heart. Other than the heart that we have, we got a soul on the inside of us. And uh, David said, "My heart is fi- when your heart is fixed. Hey, you won't hey, you won't be afraid. You'll praise God when the enemy's around." He said, "Here in this scripture, he's talking about a good man, and he said his heart is established, and he shall not be afraid until he sees desire upon his enemies. I ain't gonna be afraid. Hey, I, I believe if your heart's fixed." I ain't saying you won't worry. I ain't saying you won't get a little unnerved. But if your heart is fixed, I believe what's going on in the last year in this world, hey, you'll be firm. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you, there's a lot of folk, their heart ain't been, wasn't fixed, secure. And you know what they've done? A lot of them quit. A lot of them give up. Hey, they said it's bad. Hey, we can't make it. Hey, listen, I don't know who ever told them that. Hey, the Bible said we're going to make it. Hey, listen, I read the back of the book, Brother Mike. Hey, well, I've seen the ending. Hey, I, I've seen him. Hey, and I'll be honest with you, it's getting closer than it's ever been. And hey, hey well, I'm glad my heart is fixed. I'm glad no matter what's going on, hey, I just keep on keeping on. Hey, listen, hey, your heart better be fixed this morning. Who yeah. was it, Brother Mike? Said a while ago, there are going to be things that these kids are going to see that we ain't never seen. That's almost 60 year old. And I look back, and man, these things I never thought I'd see, brother. Hey, I think, man, there ain't no way. Hey, I've seen things change this whole uh, thing in a matter of just a little bit. Yeah. What, Twin Towers? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't really thinking about that. Didn't even know who Bin Laden was and all that. Hell, but I remember that day at Thermo, how when the talk began to go out, how they bombed the Twin Towers. I'm thinking, what in the world are they talking about? Because they never gave it a thought. But then, that's all we heard about for what? Years. Hey, years. It changed the airports in security. Hey, it changed churches. Who would ever have thought in 2021, hey, we'd have to have security cameras in the parking lot. Hey, who would have thought that? Hey, you say, preacher, what happened? Somebody let down somewhere. Hey, the generation that you're seeing uh, holding signs and saying marching in, and man, we had to put up the Black Lives Matter. Now it's going to be the Asians again. Why, why, Why is it? White person, kid, you don't see us hollering White Lives Matter. Huh? Hey, I'm so sick. Hey, it'll be somebody else next week. It'll be somebody else. Hey, because they think, hey, he didn't say he killed because there was Asian. He killed as a spa. And I don't know if he had problems there or not. I don't know. He might have got a bad massage. I don't know. Oh, but can I tell you who would ever thought? 2021. Even in 2020, he'd be sitting in the parking lot. 2020, having to go live. Hey, who'd ever thought that? Hey, I hadn't ever thought it. I don't know about you. I never thought it. I, I, I mean, even last year when all that come up, man, they said, give us two weeks. Man, I had a preacher call me. He said, what are we going to do? What are you gonna do? I said, well, I said, it's during the wintertime. We miss more snow for that. I said, we'll do what, what they asked for right now. Hey, then I, we done that. Hey, Amen. Hey, but whoever thought all of it would have changed everything? It has. Whoever thought we'd see a commercial with a mask? Whoever thought we'd see a commercial with two kissing, man and man kissing and woman and woman kissing? Whoever thought that? Oh, listen, I, hey, we never give it a thought, but all at once, hey, they, they scream discrimination, and now everybody, the TV, even the TV shows and the commercials Amen, have catered to it. Amen. Can I tell you, it don't bother me a bit because I'm on the right track, and I'll be honest, my heart is fixed. Yes. It's fixed. 
You, you ain't going to persuade me anything else. Hey, you ain't going to persuade me. Hey, I want to quit as much as anybody. Hey, but I, you, hey, you can't persuade me. God ain't on the throne. Amen. He's there. He's there. Hey, notice, he won't be afraid of evil tidings. You know what that is? That's them terror bears tell, talking about you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I looked it up. Bad news. How many people got bad news on the phone and they wanted to just quit church and everything? What about somebody got somebody talked about them a little bit and they just want to, want to quit? You know why? Their heart wasn't fixed. Hey, that fix means secure. It means firmly. Hey, listen, great time. Hey, I thought of the book of Job. I thought about Job. I thought about his friends that came and tried to encourage him. And, and I, I don't know if I was trying to encourage him or not. I mean, they give him all that bad news. I, I thought about when they walked up. And they uh, I walked up and they told him one after another about bad news and things that happened. Hey, but I find Job still praising God. I find Job living for God. Hey, no matter what everybody else said, he just lived for God. Why was Job able to do that? His heart was fixed. Hey, his heart was fixed. Hey, I, I thought in the book of Acts, thought about Paul, and he's talking about some things. And but he said, made this statement, and none of them moved me. Ain't nobody went through all Paul went through outside of Jesus. I mean, not Jesus, only Jesus I know of suffered like he suffered in Job. Hey, we not suffer. We think we suffer. When we have a little problem in our life. Hey, we think we've suffered. Hey, because something didn't go right. Hey, we think we suffered because we might have lost a vehicle. Because we couldn't pay for it. Hey, I'll tell you, you know who gets yourself in a bad shape? You. You can't blame God. Well, God said he'd take care of me. You know what he done? He allows you to have things that wasn't his will for you to have. But he allowed you to have them. And now he's saying, okay, who was it mentioned that about the, was it Mike? Who was it? Somebody mentioned this morning about the king. Hey, about that king. Hey, you know what? Hey, they said, give us a king. They went before, Samuel went before God. And God said, no, you can't have a king. If you do, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. He goes back to them, says, hey, God said, you can't have one. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. They said, we don't care. We want one anyway. And do you know what God done? He allowed them to have a king. He allowed them to be just like everybody else. Saul's the one that he allowed them to get. There was a little boy, shepherd boy, who he was getting ready to be king. Hey, can I tell you something? You better have your heart fixed in this day and hour we're living in. Hey, it kills me. I, I mean, it bothers me. I, I mean, I can't lose sleep and all that when people's in and out. Hey, if it don't bother a pastor, how people show up on Sunday morning and never show up again, something's wrong. I mean, I can't let it affect me behind the pulpit, but it, it bothers a pastor. Because I don't mean nothing. Preacher, I'm here this morning. I say, hey, listen, won't you stand behind the pulpit and try to pastor a while? Huh? Hey, I ain't being mean and all that. Hey, but listen, everybody ought to be a pastor. I don't care who you ought to be a pastor. You would learn how that pastor cares for you. He worries about you. He looks for, he knows what's coming on this earth. If anybody knows, the pastor ought to know. And he knows it's going to get tough. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. Hey, if I ate one meal a day, I'd starve to death. If I ate one meal a week, I'd starve to death. Hey, you know what happens? The heart's not fixed. Hey, listen, this makes a difference when your heart's fixed. Hey, when your heart's fixed, hey, you'll trust in the Lord. You know what he said? Thou shalt not be afraid of evil tidings when all this bad news comes. He said, his heart is, fi heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. And Brother Steve read the scripture this morning, Proverbs. What did he say? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart 
and lean not unto thy own understanding. I'm going to tell you what gets us in trouble. He said acknowledge him in his ways. What gets us, we get trust in our decisions. We get thinking we're so spiritual that we can make decisions ourselves. We don't need God. And then we make a mistake and choose. Then we'll say, God, why did you let that happen? You one that chose that path. You're the one that chose that road. It wasn't God. <laughs> it wasn't God. Hey, you, hey, you're the one that chose that. And God said, it ain't my will, but go ahead and travel that path. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to keep trusting God. I trust God more than the government. Hey, I trust the God more than I do all, all the preachers in the world. Hey, I'm just going to trust God. Hey, he ain't never let me down. He's always been there. The word fixed means secure. I'm going to give you three things. If your heart is fixed, these three things, and there's probably more, but this is what three things God gave me. If you, your heart is fixed, if it's secure, if it's unmovable, they'll be secure again. What, what is it, preacher? First of all, if your heart's fixed, your salvation will be secure. Hey, God didn't save you for you to wonder. He didn't save you for you to toss, turn all night wondering. Hey, he didn't save you for that. Hey, if your heart is fixed, your salvation will be secure. Hey, you won't worry about losing it. Hey, you'll go for God. Even though things are not that good, you'll still go for it. Hey, how you know it's secure? Hey, the Bible said in Ephesians, sealed unto, with that Holy Spirit of promise. You know what, it, what that means? A finished transaction. I got saved in that altar. You got saved over there at Gucci's Creek. You know what happened? He stamped you. He sealed you. Amen. How long, preacher? Until the day of redemption. What the Bible said. Oh, he feeds to that Holy Spirit of promise. Hey, listen, it means a final transaction. You don't have to go get it done over again. Hey, you don't have to get re-saved. Hey, you don't have to. Why? Because you've been sealed Amen. until the day of redemption. It means also finished transaction means ownership. People get saved, Brother Steve, and they think they're still their own. Better read your Bible. Before you got saved, you know what you was doing? You were serving the devil. Oh, I wasn't no devil worshiper. You're serving one or the other. Hey, when God saved you, he got you out of that bondage. Hey, do you ever wonder why you done what you done? Hey, you're serving the devil. Living it up, serving your flesh. The world, how I many you was following every which way they wanted you to go? Had this lust of this flesh, you'd go. Hey, listen, but I find in the book of Corinthians, he said, uh, no, you're not your own anymore. Huh? Has you been bought with a price? What was that price? The precious blood of the Lamb of God. Oh, what a price that was, Dale. Hey, what a price. Hey, I couldn't have paid if I'd had a million dollars. Hey, I couldn't have bought it. I couldn't live good enough. I couldn't do good enough. Oh, but the precious blood of Jesus cleansed me. He saved me. And he put me in the family of God. Hey, I lost scripture, but I ain't going to go to it. Oh, he said in 1 Peter 1, 5, kept by the power of God. We're, uh, we have an inheritance, by the way. Hey, we have an inheritance reserved in heaven that fadeth not away. Oh, oh it, it ain't going to fade away. Megan won these little trophies during playing softball. She played all of her life. And, you know, anymore, they don't care if you win or not, you get a trophy. I mean, that's sending the wrong message to kids, I think. But, I mean, I know it's good to have a trophy, all that. But she has got some for winning and all that. But you know what? If she don't keep them shined up, they fade. And you know what happens? Puts it on a shelf. Sometimes in a box. 
put it back under the bed. You get it out, and there it's dusty. It's got them lint balls all over. You say, I ain't done at my house. Hey, man, thank God for you. I don't hardly ever look under the bed, Judy. Art to, I guess. But I don't. Might be a snake under there. I don't know. The only thing I know for sure that's under there, Brother Ryan, is a, uh, I think it's a twin bed thing. He's under there. Oh, but listen. Hey, we've been bought with a price. We're owned by him. We're not owned by our, we're not our own anymore. Amen. Hey, listen. It means security. That goes along with the word fix. Secure. I'm secure. How saved are you, preacher? I'm so saved. I'm already in heaven right now. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm in Christ. Yes, sir. You know where he is? Sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, Charles. Hey, if I'm in him, I'm already there. Hey, I know these times, but I'm glad he don't. Nothing separates from the love of God, Romans 8. I mean, his love for us is what he's talking about. We let things keep us from loving him like we are too. Amen. We do. We, we, we let things happen in, in our life. We, we, and boy, we'll, we just, well, God didn't answer that prayer. We got my hanky. God didn't answer that prayer. I just don't know if I love him anymore or not. You better think back to you. Amen. When you ain't been what you are to be. And he still loves you. Yep. That prodigal son, he's in a far country. He wastes his steps and rises his living. There's a father back there at the father's house still loved him. Hey, they may be somebody listening on Facebook this morning. Or they may be somebody in the altar. Hey, they just ain't been, hey, they may be somebody sitting in here just ain't been what you are to be for God. He still loves you. He still cares for you. That's security. That's fixed. My heart is fixed. Oh, notice our salvation will be secure. Hey, notice this. Hey, this is a big one. People say, don't need this. It's a big one. Our doctrine will be secure. Hey, you won't be swaying one way for a while, swaying another way for a while. Oh, no. Hey, you won't. Let, 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 let me give you some scripture. Look in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Let's look at this. Somebody said, well, we just need to do a wave doctrine. Do away with the King James Bible then. Hey, listen, you know why I am what I am? Because of the Word of God. Hey, listen, I, I'm glad I didn't follow a man, brother, brother Steve. Man, I had some good preachers in my, in my, down through the years in my life. But I didn't follow a preacher. Because they was doing something, I'd do it. Man, if they had a white shirt on, I didn't mean I have to have one. I, I used to wear a white shirt all, every time. White shirts. And then I said, I'd wear some colored shirts. You know what? It didn't change me a bit. It didn't help my preaching none. I still love to wear white shirts. I still love them. I used to wear cowboy boots all the time. You know why I wore them? Philip Garland wore them. And one day I decided I didn't want to wear cowboy boots. I didn't have to call them up and say, Preacher, I just want to let you know I ain't wearing cowboy boots no more. I went and got me some them shoes you tie up. Uh, hey, listen. Hey, there's a whole lot easier on my feet now. My toes got like this. You got cowboy boots on? Who got cowboy boots on? You? You got cowboy boots. You look like a cowboy. I'm telling you. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with cowboy boots. But I found out this caused Pastor Warm. I didn't have to wear them. Hey, you don't have to dress up just like me, Brother Jeff, Josh. Hey, let be your own self. Be who you are. Hey, I am what I am. Happy day of my life. And I quit following man, trying to be like other men, trying to be like other churches. And I just want to be like myself. Somebody said, preacher, why don't you do this? So-and-so's doing it. Because they ain't, they ain't ones that were 
you know, getting orders from. God is. And I, be, I promise you, through all 2020, we done what we done, whether it was in the parking lot, whether we come in here. You know, we done it because there was somebody in heaven Amen. said, it's time. Amen. Go back inside. Amen. Maybe you need to go back out for the Sunday. I mean, God knows, man, I pray and seek God on that. But notice what he said in the book of Ephesians. Talking about, he called some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the same. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Why did he give us people like that to help us? So we can learn from them that we can teach somebody else. Hey, hey, notice. He said, till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, a mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Why? Look at verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried away and carried about with every wind of doctrine. <laughs> By the slight of men and the cunning of craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That's why you better have your heart fixed on your salvation and on what you believe because you'll be falling for everything that comes around. You'll be falling for it. I, I know people, and I've seen people down through the years, Brother Steve. I'm talking about preachers. If they was this one bunch, that's what they was. If they was another bunch, that's what they was. I've got news for you. I am what I am. And what I preach here is what I preach when I preach revival somewhere, when God opens the door. I don't care what's got over the door. Hey, on the radio, I preach what God gave me. Hey, hey, quit trying to preach what everybody else preaches. Amen. Get in the Bible and preach what God gives you. Hey, hey, some people, if they don't preach, how they won't preach if they don't preach what everybody else has already said. Amen. Study the Bible and preach. I like to read after me, and I do. Hey, listen. Notice what he said in 2 Timothy 3. Notice what he said. 2 Timothy 3. Why we have the word of God. Hey, all scripture. Notice what he said. And hey, let me back up. I like 14, 15. I could read the whole chapter probably. But he said in 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hath been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast Learn them. You know, learning things from people, don't you don't even know who they are. Hey, people learn trying to learn something from people that all they know is they're a preacher. They don't know the life they live. Hey, do you know what I like about the local church? I mean, I mean, hey, my door's open to you. You can come to my house anytime. Hey, you can ask me anything. Hey, listen, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said then that from a child thou hast learned the holy scriptures, which were, are able to make thee wise into salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm glad them things I learned as a child. Them things, that's why I didn't play during service. I sit beside mom and dad and listen to the preacher. Hey, I wasn't running all over the church. I sit with mom and dad. I remember. Because I know how I remember. Because I got a lot of looks. If I'm sitting on this side of mom. And I'm not paying attention. She give me that look. And when I got that look. You know what that meant? Can I translate that look for you? That look man said. You just wait. Till I get you home. You ever got that brother? Hey, took a spoon. And she never done me this way, but I seen a, uh, a picture of a big old colored woman with a spoon knocking her kid on the back of the head. I can see Donna doing that, can't you? 
She would in the choir. She probably would here. Hey, but all mom had to do was, and I would pray the rest of the service, and I would pray on the way home. I'd be an angel. I'd think, oh, praise God. Lord, help her forget that. <laughs> Anybody else ever got a whooping after you got home? I mean, a lot of times got it at church too, but man, I got that look. I know you just look out. Boy, I'd get in the house. I'd think, man, she's forgot about it. And I'd hear that knock on my door. I'd say, Mom ain't forgot. And I'd get a whipping. I'll tell you what, 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 you know why they's out there are holding them signs and picketing and all that? It's because they, they didn't get a whipping when they was young. They got put in a corner. Anybody else got put in the corner? God help you. Your mom and dad need to get straightened out. I've never been put in time out in my life. I don't ever remember being sent to the, ba- to the bedroom. You know what that consists of now? Going to the bedroom, playing with the Nintendo game, or PlayStation, and watching TV. Who wouldn't want to go to the bedroom? You, know, and you got a telephone. You can go to the bedroom and call somebody. Amen. That whooping kept things in your mind. Amen. Amen. What's wrong with this world today? <laughs> Doctrine. Notice what he said. I'm, I'm, I'm about done. I told you it's going to be long. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. What did it come from? Come from God and is profitable. It means of good news. <laughs> It means it's uh, well worth it. It's profitable for doctrine. There's that word. People won't say no, but we don't need doctrine. We don't need it. I'm going to tell you something. We need to be what we are. Now, I preach in other churches. Do I change when I I preach in them churches? Not a bit. As a matter of fact, some of the best liberty I ever had was in Higgins Free Will Baptist Church. Man, I'm telling you, they preached me to death. Felt like I'd been in revival that week. It was in the little church before they got the big brick church or the other church. I mean, I know we'll forget. We went down there and they had a church full. And, uh, and, and, and man, they sung. And boy, that was good. Man, that was good enough for me. Man, that was awesome. Then got done. And I don't ever do this unless God's really leading me. Brother, brother pre- pastor at that time, Brother Keith said, Brother Randall, you got something on your heart? Well, I'm sitting there and I do. If I'd said no, I'd been lying. I said, yeah, 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 I got something to come on and preach. And I went and preached. They shouted through the singing. They praised God through the singing. And you'd thought they didn't feel like praising God through the preaching. But they still preached me to death. Hey, listen, be what you are. No matter where you are. Hey, hey, we've been known Eating Creek. We'll preach at the drop of a hat and drop the hat to preach. Amen. That's what they say. Man, if you ain't ready, hey, if you ain't ready to preach, if you ain't got no desire to preach, hey, if you just don't want nothing to do. And I got to that point one time. I just saw a golden backslid. Come from a third shift work. I'm telling you, you better be careful with your jobs. And it killed me spiritually. And I didn't see no good in nothing. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Let me tell you something. It ain't always shouting. I love shout, don't you? Woo, I shout in here, out there. Choir singing, preach, it don't matter. I love shouting. But sometimes it not, might not be God's will for the shout. Sometimes somebody may need some instruction. Somebody may need correction. Hey, as a pastor, you'll preach, Brother Ryan. And, man, you'll, you'll hurt. You won't sleep the night before. You'll get up the next morning thinking, well, why do I have to preach that? And do I really have to? And you'll be trying to find something else. You won't find nothing else. And when you get here, God said, that's what I want right there. And you have to preach it. And you get down, you feel like 
the devil will come up and scoot up beside you and say, they won't want to hear you preach again, that's for sure. <laughs> Devil's a liar, by the way. <laughs> but that might be what helps somebody. <laughs> Not only will your salvation be secure, your doctrine will be secure, but your faith will be secure. You say, is not faith and salvation the same thing? Nope. It's not. These people say that their faith is not very strong at all. Huh? Hey, even the disciples that walked with Jesus and, and done all that, there was times their faith was little. They got on that ship that day, and man, the storm got to blowing. Jesus had done told them. He just told them, let us go to the other side. Yep. That would have been good enough if the storm, if the ship turned upside down, whatever. And Jesus said, we're going to the other side. I believe he's going, well, he's going to get us there. Yep. Then that storm come. That storm come. And they couldn't. They were scared. They were scared to death and and uh, maybe somebody said, go wake Jesus. He's in the hinder part of the ship. Wake him up. Tell him we need help. He gets up and just speaks. And the waves went down. The winds ceased. He looks at him and said, oh, ye. He said, fear not. Fear not. He said, oh, ye of little faith. Now, you said this morning that uh, faith is a grain of mustard seed. I wonder what little faith is. Huh? That's probably smaller than a mustard. He said if you have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, hey, you could say move it that mountain, move it, it'll be moved. Their faith wasn't even that big. All through the word of God. He said, oh, you little faith. Oh, but then I find, I find Paul and all that he went through. And he just kept on for God. 20, Acts 20 is where that was a while ago. And I ain't going to turn over there. But he mentions all some things. And he said this. None of them things moved me. All that he faced. All that he went through. Hey. He said they didn't move me. Why? His heart was fixed. Lord, you blessed my heart this morning. I'm telling you. Laura's had a time in the last, I don't know how long. And then she got up this morning with tears in her eyes talking about how they had an electric fire or had a fire, but thanking God for taking care of it. You know what I believe? I believe you can look back there and see one that heart's fixed. Surely been through a whole lot, look like I see it, heart's fixed. Hey, they've been others, been through a lot, been through uh, trial after trial, and their heart's fixed. They just keep on going for God. Amen. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Don't stop. Don't look back. Keep on going. I got news for you. Storm's going to come. We're going to have to battle for that faith. Said in the book of, Ty in the book of Jude, he said this. He said, I want to preach about, no doubt about Jesus. Common salvation is what he called it. Yes, he said, but I found it more needful. Preach to you, to contend for the faith. Our faith and what we believe is under attack, by the way. We better stand up for it. Contend don't mean laying down. It means standing up for it. Hey, don't let somebody come persuade you just because they want you as a number on the church. Don't let them come persuade you to jump, jump ship and go, go. I'm talking about what they believe and go, go that route. I know people, honestly, I know people that in good Bible-believing churches, good men of God, power of God in the church, and I've seen them people Leave out from their good church and go to one where there's entertainment, where the smoke. I ain't going to name the church. I could. I can name you person after person after person 
that left good Bible believing churches and jumped tail and run towards that way. Every which way it is. Hey, you know what? That's probably a bunch of people their heart wasn't fixed. I'm not ashamed to be Baptist to you. Baptist didn't save me. But man, I'm sure glad to be Baptist. Man, under under preaching, preaching, telling us you must be born again and and be saved. And and then uh, I mean, gonna be a change take place in your life. Uh, I'm like that preacher. I heard a preacher talking this week. Just sort of, sometimes I, I, I stop and listen a little bit. And, and I don't know what he was. I'll be honest with you. He wasn't dressed, wasn't dressed up. I don't know if it's a if it, if it Bible school. I don't know what it was. And I don't even know if he's the preacher. But he said this. And it makes sense. People can come as they are. Yep. But they won't stay as they are. Amen. Amen. In other words, we don't have to change the way they are for them to stay. If they stay, if they stay, it'd be because God transformed them. Amen. I've seen them yet blue hair come into our church. I've seen them with earrings, look like they fell in a tackle box. I, I've seen boy, they come, but I've seen God get a hold of them and transform them. I know we'll forget that one guy. Man, he did. He had earrings everywhere. And women having Bible study, and me and Dave Wilcox invited him to go with us. He started going with us. And uh, one night, we, the women was eating out here, and we was eating out yonder. Hey, they didn't know we was eating good, too. We was out up there eating. And uh, when I sat there, and I just looked. I hadn't even noticed. I got looking at him. He didn't have no earrings. Didn't have them in his ears. Didn't have him in his lip. He didn't have nothing. What happened? A few weeks before that, he got saved by the grace of God. Oh, that, hey, we ain't kicking nobody out. Hey, but I tell you what will happen. We'll preach to them. Tell them about a loving God that can change their life. Faith will be secure. Hey, First Corinthians, uh, uh, in First Peter 1, 7 talks about the trying of your faith. Becoming more precious than that of gold. Don't be afraid of a storm in your life. Don't be afraid of a problem in your life. What God is doing, he's taking that. Now, I, I grant you, there's some that's self-afflicted. But they some, you ain't done a thing, don't deserve it. But God's allowing that to take place in your life to knock some rough, rough edges off of you. I don't know. I need I need rough edges knocked off of me every once in a while. Knock them off. Hey, sometimes what you're going through might be to make you stronger. And sometimes what you're going through, hey, first second Corinthians chapter one, he said he is the God of all comfort that comforts us. So why? So that we can comfort somebody else. See, God knows. <laughs> I don't understand it, but God knows that faith will be secure. Them storms come, you just keep on going. You might be like Peter, take your eyes off the Lord for just a little bit, but you know who to call to and get back. Oh. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, I'm about done. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You ever feel like you ain't getting nowhere? Sunday school teacher, you ever feel like you ain't getting nowhere? You ever wonder, anybody listening or not? Anybody care? We've all been through that. It don't matter if you're a preacher. If you're a Sunday school teacher, a superintendent, I'm telling you, choir leader, it don't matter. There'll be times in your life you'll think, man, I ain't doing a bit of good. You know what he's saying? Just keep on. Keep on. I thought of this scripture over in, in the book of Philippians 4, 10 and 13. I ain't going to turn over. I'm done pretty much. 
I have learned, Paul said this, I have learned, I have learned in whatsoever state I, I am. He said, therewith, be content. If God never allows me to have a million dollars, I'm going to be content with what I got. <laughs> oh, man, I, I drove that little old car you just had. I sold my truck to Josh. He took it and fixed it up. And uh, I was content about that little old car. People look at me, pull up at a revival meeting. They look, see me pull up in that. Hey, some of them probably scratching their heads saying, he gets to give them another church or something. Hey, it ain't church's responsibility. And, uh, but I didn't bother me a bit, man. I'd get out of it and go to them revival meetings. I'd come to church, park right back there in my parking place. I was content with it. I did look into getting a, another vehicle one time, and, and uh, my credit, I didn't have no credit. And I had to go somewhere else. That's where I got the truck. And uh, well, God, God, God sure had blessed me. It seemed like God began to work on me, saying, you need a vehicle. I thought, Lord, when I've tried to get vehicles before, and they just look at me and say, ain't no way. I was part-time, by the way. If you're part-time, it's hard. Yep. You're t- you get part-time, go try to find buy you something. Yep. But God brought my mind about this place, and I thought, I'm just going to ride out there, Brother Jeff, and see what they might do. So we rode out there. And I'm a looking for a Camry. I'm a looking for all this, I mean, something, something. I, I mean, that's what I was looking for. And uh, never will forget. Uh, I'm there. And uh, he's, uh, I, I even tried out a Ford. Got under conviction. He, I thought, man, if I drive that to church, they'll harass me big time. Sometimes I wish I bought it. It was a lot cheaper. But uh, I never will forget, I was content with that little vehicle. I'm getting what I'm going, getting. I was content with it. Boy, God blessed me to get on. This is before I was poor time, by the way. But God, but I went out there, and I'd look at one. I drove that one. And that old, uh, old guy said, well, we got this one right over here. And we, we standing there, and he said, Got that Nissan right down here. He done gave me like a price range and all that. He said, got that Nissan right there. Maximum. I'd look good in that, wouldn't I? Nissan Maximum. I mean, it's sharp. I walked down there, and evidently God had one of his angels put a flat tire on it. (laughs) Or I might have got that thing. I went down there, and oops, it's got a flat tire. So this is what he done. He uh, went and tried to get some guy to come fix it, and the guy come out there and looked at it and went back in, and I'm standing there waiting on something to happen. I, I want to drive that car. That's a nice car. I'm sitting there, and I look over, and there's this black Hondi sitting there. And there's actually two of them, and that guy come back out there, and he said, uh, he said, I don't know what's going on. You know, I don't know why they ain't out here fixing all that. And I said, uh, I said, well, what about that one right there? Had two of them, silver one and a black one. He said, oh, that's a, you know, you know, any car salesman's in here ain't making, fun. oh, come on, I'll tell you about it. And I looked at it, and I looked at it up and down, looked at it. You want to drive it? I said, yeah, let me drive it. And I drove it. And you know what I believe? I was content in where I was and what I was driving that God said, it's time for you to move up a little bit. And I got that car, and and got it just about payments like I wanted. I mean, they supposed to clean it up. I think they lied on that part. When they supposed to clean it up and the, and the price is still on the side of it, they didn't clean it up too good. But God bless me. Do you know what? I've learned whatever state I'm in, I'm not Paul. Let's be content with it. I look back over my life, Sherry, as a young person, a young married person, and I'd say every one of us has went through this, as a young married person, you get married and people say, you better be careful. You'll be head over heels in debt before you know it. And you look at them and go, 
That'll never happen to me. And then the wife gets a, gets a job, good job, making good money. And we took a trailer we didn't give this about nothing for her. Sitting in the trailer park, fixed it up and everything. Hey, we weren't content with it. We went in debt for a bigger one. 14 by 70. Maybe in 74. Nice, brand new. Our car, we weren't content with it. You know what we done? She's making more money, so we're going to spend a little more and get a little better car. Yeah. The best one of all is I got tired riding that little bitty lawnmower. And we had an account at Carolina. What is it? Over there in Spruce Pine used to be. Yeah, yeah. You can get something in there. You just go in and look at them and say, I want it, and they'll figure up a big payment plan for you. And we bought a lot of stuff through there. Why, no. But I wasn't content with that little bitty five-horsepower lawnmower. Now, I wasn't as big as I am now. Now, I didn't look as bad. Now, you want to see me on that thing now? <laughs> I say all that, man, we went in debt before we knowed it. Head over heels in debt. Struggling. Trying to make a living. Man, I wished, I look back over my life, I wish I'd been content like Paul in that. If your heart's fixed this morning, your, your salvation will be secure. You won't be going around worrying about if you're going to lose it or not. If your heart's fixed, hey, if your heart's fixed, and not only that, but if your heart's fixed, your doctrine will be right. You won't flash around or whatever. And if your heart's fixed, your faith will be secure. No matter what might come your way, you just keep on serving God, living for God. Easy to quit. Quit's the easy way out, by the way. You just keep on serving God and living for Him. But preacher, I believe there's been many a, ch a preacher that stayed too long, and I believe there's been many a preacher that left too quick because they didn't see something happen in more than two years. It don't happen that way. Anybody ever grow a garden? Did you ever plant it the one day and go out there and eat it up the next? You don't go get fruit off of it. Hey, listen, your faith will be secure, and you'll keep on with God. I want to ask you this morning, Laura, if you will come, Piana. I, I want to ask you, is your heart fixed? Hey, I believe you. we're all going to worry. If I said I didn't worry about things, I'd be lying. But I'm going to tell you something, my heart's fixed. And I may worry, but then there's a peace which passes all understanding comes through and says, don't worry. Leave it to me. So everybody stand up for a moment. This come from God. And maybe somebody here this morning, you're not settled on your salvation. It'd be a good time to get settled. You may be here this morning. You ain't, I mean, your doctrine, you ain't settled on your doctrine. You better get it settled. Because they're, they're, they're beginning to get more and more out there. And you may be struggling with your faith. You may be, these trials may be heavy. You may be having a hard time. Your faith ain't like it ought to be. Get secure in it. Get secure in it. As she plays, just for a moment. Maybe God spoke to your heart this morning. You just need to come pray. Won't you do that?